can start. I hope you had good discussions and meetings in the breakout rooms. Uh, I learned something new about earth filtration, which is very good. Um, so today we have a science talk uh, by Jun Yang. Uh, Jun is a postdoc with us. Um, and she is not only a postdoc with us, she is also uh, heading the physics department postdoc association. Um, it's, a, it's a very unique entity, the postdoc association. Uh, I work with, uh, with June as, as the faculty liaison for that. And especially during COVID times, it's, it's very tough and it's very tough to get postdocs involvement generally and especially now. Uh, but I would like to encourage all of you to consider telling your postdocs um, to read <laughs> June's emails um, and really respond to the activities that uh, she's organizing. We did a bike ride on, on one weekend and that was very nice, or so just a walk along the Charles and uh, in normal years when there's actual searches going on, we have a lot of this uh, type of meetings that uh, June will be organizing where we grab a few postdocs and some faculty and talk about how you set up a good uh, faculty application how you write things up, your research statement, later on uh, how you go through a successful interview, just giving the postdocs some of the insight and experience that uh, faculty have by virtue of serving on search committees and helping them out um, and also just being there in case they, they have something they want to talk about or need some help. So we really truly appreciate uh, Jun Yang for actually taking the time and doing this. It's fully voluntary and uh, it doesn't go unnoticed and uh, it's not trivial to find people to do it. So I thank you for that. Uh, but today uh, she's going to tell us not about those activities, but about her own work. Uh, so June comes to us from China. Uh, she did her undergrad uh, degree in the China University of Mining and Technology and then a master's degree in the China Academy of Science. Uh, then she went on for a PhD uh, formerly at uh, UMass Lowell where she also spent in the middle of her PhD a couple of years in Harvard, working as an uh, SAO postdoc, uh, pre-doctoral fellow. And then she went for a uh, quick first postdoc at uh, Utah. And then she joined uh, us here at MIT in the Kavli Institute. And uh, will tell us about her work where she studies X-ray binary stars in nearby galaxies uh, with data from mu star, XMM, Newton, uh, and uh, Chandra. So, a very wide set of probes, which I assume will give us a very nice view of things. Uh, so without further ado, uh, June, please go ahead. Thank you. You're muted. Thank you, thank you all, and uh, thanks everyone for having me here. So I will talk about the high mass X battery in nearby galaxies. Uh, I will start with a short introduction about the PERSAs and their discoveries. Uh, for the PERSAs in the Magellanian clouds, I will show a comprehensive library. <clears throat> Later, then I will introduce a position search in IC10 to form a comparison sample with the uh, SMC PERSAs. After that, I will show the high mass experiments in a larger local group galaxy M33. So uh, you already know that uh, PERSA is short for pulsating star. It's a highly magnetized neutron star that emits a beam of magnetic radiation. This radiation can only be observed when it points towards Earth. Much the way like the lighthouse, it can only be seen when the light is pointing in the direction of an observer. So this shows the evolution of stars. Start with a standard cloud with proton stars. A small star becomes a jet giant, planetary nebular, then a white dwarf is formed. A large star goes through radar supergiant, supernova exposure, and a new star or, or black hole is formed. <clears throat> so after a pulsar goes through a, uh, after the burning phase and the collapse, the pulsars are formed in supernova explosions. So the neutron stars are formed only when the mass of the stellar core is larger than 
1.44 solar mass, which is known also known as a Chandrasek limit. This shows the structure of a neutron star. The unknown inner core, the superfluid neutrons, protons, and electrons, the inner and the outer crust, the polar cap with the open magnetic field lines. On November 28, 1967, Jocelyn Bonner and uh, Anthony Hewish discovered the first uh, pulsar with the spin period 1.33 seconds. Uh, imagine a pulsar has the size of a city that rotates every second. In 1974, Hewish and Rael became the first astronomers to be awarded the Nobel Prize in physics. A battery pulsar is a pulsar with a battery companion, often a white dwarf or a neutron star. In at least one case, the companion neutron star is another pulsar, the double pulsar PSR J0737. The first battery pulsar, Hart's Tanger battery pulsar, was discovered in 1974 and uh, aerosable by Joseph Taylor and Russell Hurst, for which they won 1993 Nobel Prize in Physics for the discovery that has opened up new possibilities for the study of gravitation. Position result from the rotation of the magnetized neutron star and the modulation arises from its binary orbit. The radius of the neutron star or black hole is about 10 kilometers, and the radius of or the operation disk is about 10 to 5 kilometers, and the separation of the system is about 10 to 6 kilometers. Uh, this shows the phase sound value of the battery system with the Roche law. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, persons from the supernova experience. A pulsar is a member of a battery system with a normal star. The gas transferred from the companion star can spin up an old, slow pulsar. So this animation zooms into a neutron star and uh, its operation disk to show a millisecond pulsar in close up. We use optic and uh, X-ray telescope to study pulsars, for example, XMM Newton. Chandra and the RXTE. This shows their spectrum. And the Chandra and RXTE covers 0.1 to 10 keV. A new star is from 3 to 79 keV. For the person in the Magellanian cloud, I will show a person library we have built, including how many observations we have used. And I will show example of our archive products and the overall properties of the SMC pulsars and the preliminary remodeling for the pulsar pulse profiles. So this background is a infrared image for the small Magellanic cloud. And the numbers show the location of the pulsars and their spin periods in seconds, which range from a fraction of a second to thousands of seconds, which is uh, to study pulsars in the Magellanian clouds because neutron stars still potentially hold many unresolved problems, and the SMC hosts the most popular speed X ray pulsars. And the known distance and the foreground low absorption make it easier to classify the luminosity so that we can understand the operation and the emission mechanism of the high mass X ray batteries. We have analyzed over thousands years, thousands of observations cover 17 year detections. So for example, XM Newton, we used 116 observations for the SMC persons and 42 observations for the large Magellanian cloud persons from 2000 to 2014. And these are the number of Chandra observations we have used. Uh, we also included all the weekly RXT observations. 
For each person, our pipeline generates a suite of useful products. For example, the single source resolved event list, cost profiles, pyrograms, and the spectrum. So this shows the number of observations we use for each person from the three satellite. So for example, the X axis shows the person's name in the order of increases entered in seconds. The green bar means uh, how many observations have actually included each person in the field of view. And the red bar means how many observations have actually detected each person. <clears throat> Similarly, this is the observation we used from Chandra and the RXTE. So overall, for all the lone persons, we have put their luminosity from a three satellite in this figure and different color means different satellite detection so x and newton are in green chandra are in red and rxt are in blue the field symbols means of pulsar positions are detected and unfilled symbols shows low significant positions are found this could need the accurate location of the propeller line so below this line, no significant positions are found. The faintest and brightest source can map out the SMC pulsar's luminosity range from 10 to 31 to 10 to 38 arc per second. For each pulsar, we have also combined the three satellite measurements. For example, let's look at this pulsar with impure 1,323 seconds. So this is the SXP 2030-23. We have 17 year complete history of this pulsar's luminosity, has flashing, has amplitude, spin period, and the significance of a spin period. The, again, the different color means a different satellite detection. So in the same time interval, the sum of the XM Newton observation detected the larger luminosity than Chandra due to its broad energy band. And the RXT doesn't have a past fraction information because there are always multiple sources in the field of view. And the RXT is a long image detector. The linear fitting to the spin chart shows this person is spinning up with a rate of 6.5 meter second per day, illuminating the mass and angular momentum transfer to the surface of a neutron star. And uh, again, the field symbols shows the uh, non scatter spin period are detected with larger than 99% significance. And unfilled symbols means no significant passations are found. So this could tell us the uh, out of status and outburst state of the person as a function of time. And uh, we, uh, for the long term, the long term spin up. And downtrends are found in 28 and 25%, respectively. They are showing you this paper. For each person, we are also characterizing the relationship between the luminosity and the past fraction. What is the past fraction? Here we have an example of the past profile. We use three different ways to calculate pass fraction. The first, we use the maximum flux minus minimum divided by the maximum, which is also called the amplitude modulation. The second way is related to the average flux. And the last one is related to the root mean square of the flux. All the three different past fractions anticorrelates with the luminosity. This is very different with the traditional report about the SMC persons because they are show positive correlation between these two variables. This means there are different operation modes are going on. For example, the spheric operation instead of the operation disk and the whole surface thermal emission or change in initial geometry. Uh, this means when the source becomes brighter and the past component increases, but the past fraction decreases. 
We use the Monte Carlo method to test the significance of these anticorrelations. Uh, the, this figure shows the 400 simulations as a function of the slopes. The positive slopes are the most positive, positive detection of an anticorrelation in the real data. So this shows this anticorrelation about two sigma confidence. Here we come back to all the SNC process. Well, put their long term skin pure derivatives as a function of skin pure in this figure. Uh, this p dot as the absolute value. The z dots dot means this person is spinning up, and the gram means they are spinning down. We can get their characteristic age of the SNC process as showing in the dashed green line. So most of the SNC parts are about 10,000 or 100,000 years old. We also calculate the mass operation rate as shown in the dashed red line. For example, this one is about 10 to negative 16 solar mass per second. So the relation between PP dot has shown a similar trend as the other parts of the population shown in this figure. So we try to build a bridge between these two PERSA populations. For example, let's pick a PERSA with spin period of 101 seconds and assume, assume the p-dot is, uh, is constant. So when the PERSA becomes older after 626,000 years later, the PERSA will spin up to one second. And the better system might be disrupted by the third object in the universe. So the better system got detached. So this person becomes an isolated person, which will be located in this area. So so far we'll talk about the uh, person library, and we have also built the preliminary modeling for the person light curves with the off-center magnetic axis. The arbitrarily sized hot spots of a neutron star are showing in the red dots, while blue dot presents the center of the person, and the, the magnetic axis then how to go to a crucial center. The black line is the photon pass, including the light bending effect. With this light bending effect, the visible reaching of the neutron star surface is significantly intense, which can be expressed in this formula. The R is the radius of the person, and R over Rg is the steward child units, uh, the initial radius is steward child units. And in infinity, the flux is reduced by the gravitational redshift factor Z sub G, which is related to the mass radius ratio. So with a different uh, model parameter combination, our model can generate different shapes of the pulse profiles. Uh, the first panel uh, for the neutron star with the symmetric hot spots. The second and the third panels are for the same neutron star but with a second hot spot shifted in the location. So the pink is a flux from the primary hot spot, and the blue is from the secondary hot spot, and the black is a combination. The observed flux fraction from one initial spot can be expressed in this formula. The F1 is a flux from one spot for yield force this arm. The cosi is, <clears throat> is the angle between the magnetic axis and the line of sight. Uh, when both hot spots are visible, the observed path shows a plateau. So the maximum path fraction of black body emission with antipodal symmetry is shown in this formula. If we want to get a larger path fraction, it can be produced by persons with asymmetric hot spots or with more than two hotspots. Here we have an example of our course profile modeling. 
for SXP 504 with the 2003 XM Newton operation. The color map is a reduced chi square between the model and the real operation. The different class in different angle combination. The theta is the angle between the spinning axis and the light of side. The beta is the angle between the spinning axis and the magnetic axis. So at the minimum reduced chi square, we, bet, we get a best fitting result theta equals 15 degree and the beta equals 64 degrees. So the redshift factor equals 0.11. With this result, the light curve comparison between the model in red and the observation in black is shown in this figure. And the bottom left is the long scale power spectrum comparison between the model in red and the real operation in black. So uh, we also take a look at the different younger galaxy IC10. So we can form a comparison sample with the SMC pulsars. Uh, because this galaxy is the closest known starburst galaxy with a starburst age of 10 million years old, which is located about 660 kilo per second away. Uh, this galaxy actually is only 1% the size of our home galaxy Milky Way. It's in the act of forming many new stars, which it made an ideal laboratory to study a hard catch phase of stellar evolution. We have searched the position in 200 X-ray point sources in the direction of this galaxy. Uh, this background is a RGB image from XM Newton observation. The green circles are the pulsar candidates we found. The white is the IC10 outline with the D25 radius of four R minutes. We found some periodicities from IC10 X1, but it might be to a red noise or window function. So we didn't find square pulsar inside of this galaxy. Although the young dwarf star burst galaxy IC10 seems to host a population of hemispheric berries, the species differ from the Magellanian cloud population in two ways. The super giant hemispheric berries dominate instead of B hemispheric berries. The persons are either absent or have a different distribution of periods. Moreover, the age of the galaxy also plays a very important role in the formation of Hamas X virus. This S10 has a much younger age and uh, comparable mechanicity to SMC. It has so far produced fewer pulsars. We have also proposed the optical observing to confirm the optical counterparts of the Hamas X virus in the direction of S10. Uh, from the National Optic Astronomy Observatory. Uh, the background is still the XM Newton operation. The yellow is our proposed field view, and the red is the uh, KDP National Observatory field view, and the green are the Chandra and blue presents a Gemini image. First, we have one, two lights spectroscopy from hydro multifiber spectrograph on the green 3.5 meter telescope. We obtained the spectra for 55 bright and 98 20, 20 candidates so that we can determine the radio velocities and spectral types. Here is an example of the spectra. We have also <clears throat> one, two half lights uh, Maya image data from the 4 meter telescope, and uh, we manually change the filter. This image is a reduced H alpha image going to SA10 with an uh, exposure time of 2.9 hours. So we can use this to pinpoint the Hamas X batteries based on the H alpha image. And uh, the optical image in H alpha and broadband can map the age and the composition in the vicinity of X ray battery candidates. 
So the last part, uh, we would also take a look at the compact object types in a larger local group galaxy M33. So with a new star, we, will, we look at the young black hole and neutron star system in this nearby star forming galaxy. And which is this galaxy because it's known distance relatively face on orientation active star formation made it an uh, ideal target to study the exogalactic high mass exobaries. And this new star observations can help constrain the distribution of our creation states of our low luminosity, high mass exobary rich population. So here are the field view of the new star observation and this the upper part, this is a <clears throat> different array camera image and the red shows the field view of the six new star observations and uh, for each field we have two epochs and so here it shows the uh, information of each observation well, we have also searched the positions in the bright sources we found the periodicities <clears throat> in M33 X8 from this new star observation. On the right, this is a power spectrum for M33 X8. The 98 minutes is a new star, is the optical period of the new star satellite. The left peak is a 12 minutes the two simultaneous observations from instrument A and B both detected the similar periodicities, but with a discrepancy of 0.7 units. So we are unsure where this signal is from. For all sources, we have also derived the counter rate. This is a point spread function calibrated point sources image for M33 X8. So this is a smooth background subtract image. This is a model and this is a radio between the data and the model. <clears throat> so with the SAO image initial counter rate 1.226 counts per second as an input, we got the counter rate as 2.05 counts per second. These are the 26 sources we have detected. We use the new star's diagnostic diagram to classify the operation states and the compact object types. Here is the color intensity diagram. The x-axis hardness ratio is calculated from three different energy bands. Soft from 4 to 6 keV and medium 6 to 12 keV and hard from 12 to 25 keV. The colored points are the sources in our galaxy. So the pink and the green are the soft state black hole and it's an intermediate state black hole. And the blue is a hard state black hole and the purple are the pulsars. The black points are the sources in M33 with the new star observations. So we have found four sources are pulsars and six sources is lying hard state black hole and the brightest source M33 X8 is an arch luminous X-ray source. About 12 and three sources fall in the intermediate and soft state black holes. This is a color color diagram. The source distribution is consistent with a color intensity diagram. Uh, we also have a similar new star survey for M31 with a low mass X ray barrier dominate population. So we can compare these two galaxies' population with a different population but similar sensitivities. The new star also provides the unique luminosity function in a hard energy band. Here, this figure is a cumulative luminosity function of sources 
detected with larger than one sigma significance in a hard energy band as shown in a blue line. And the red is a model fit with a power law. The yellow is a luminosity function for the active galactic nucleus. So we can use this to study the demographics of the Hamas x batteries. Since this can help us to study the evolution and formation of the Hamas x batteries because of their dependence on the galaxy, such as their stellar mass, star formation, and the local dependency. So for resources M33, <clears throat> we found some spurious task signal in one new star observation. And we have detected uh, 26 sources with larger than three sigma significance. And most of the sources are uh, intermediate and hard state black holes. We have confirmed five new sources. And we use the luminosity function to study the demographics of the high mass x barriers. And uh, so uh, we have built a library for the persons in small and large Magellanian cloud with a three satellite combination covering 17 year detections. In a small Magellanian cloud, we found 28 persons spinning up and 25 spinning down. And we are since using this library, we found some anti-correlation between the past fraction and luminosity in some persons. This can show the different operation modes are going on. And we use a pivotal diagram to study the person's age and their evolution. And we did a passage search on a nearby galaxy to form a comparison sample with the SMC persons. And we also use the new star satellite to study the operation states and compact object types in M33. In, um, so next step, we would like to use the other radio and X-ray telescope to study the pulsars near the galact galactic center. For example, use a hard X-ray module telescope and the 500 meter aperture spheric telescope in China. And, uh, thank you, and I would like to take the questions. Thank you very much. That was very nice. Um, Bruno. Thank you. Um, since you have PP dot diagrams, if you ever try to assess the loss of angular momentum, for sure it will be bigger than the one provided by the emission of gravitational wave. What is your opinion? Um, so, so may you say again? You, so you mean? It's a difficult question. <laughs> you mean what's the relationship with uh, gravitation? Um, I, I I don't quite understand your question, Miss. Say more details about the question. Let, let me explain the question. If you take the famous binary pulsars, the Nobel Prize, you know, Taylor and I forgot, Hulse, who was my student, by the way, um, there you were kind of sure that the loss of angular momentum was due to gravitational waves, right? Now, you have studied other type of binaries. Have you ever tried to assess whether the loss of angular momentum is large and whether it could be explained by another process? It's not easy. Yeah, so uh, so here I just showed the evolution of the, the binary system. So if the loss like the triple, like the, if there are a certain object, so might disrupt the system and uh, um, so the binary system might evolve, evolve into an isolated person. 
Yeah, so the moment anchor momentum of a system, if it's involved in your third object, so the whole system um, might change, but I, I yeah. don't know much of the how. maybe. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank I, I you. think you can continue this offline, since it's like very detailed. Um, Erin? Hi, Jun. I just want, wanted to ask a kind of clarifying question. Um, I'm interested in M33X8, this um, ultra-luminous X-ray source. I mean, so what you've found is that it looks like it's uh, it's a super, super Eddington accretion onto some kind of compact object just given by its high luminosity. And then did I understand correctly that you have identified this now as a pulsar? Because that would be, I mean, there's only, there's so few of these um, Super Eddington pulsars. It, it sounds exciting if it's, an, if it's a new one. Yeah, so for this one, because of, like we found some um, periodicities from simultaneously observation from instrument A and B, but they are not, uh, there is a discrepancy of about 27 minutes. So because of this, we cannot Okay, sounds like you should get some follow up observations with NICER, some, some other instrument to confirm that because there are just so few of these. I think it would be very exciting to confirm the pulsar. Thank you for Okay, we're getting close to the hour. Uh, there's one more question. If not, then, oh, Mike. Yeah, Mike, go ahead. Sorry, I'll just ask a super duper quick one. In your, um, uh, the, the plot that looks like a turtle head, typically the hard, soft versus uh, luminosity. Um, yeah, where mm -hmm. your mouse is. Um, do you not see soft sources because you're using a hard X-ray telescope or are there just all the sources you have there are in the sort of harder intermediate state? Is that right? Yeah, we, um, this, you start also cover the soft energy band, we, this all the source we detect with larger three sigma significance. So we don't find, we don't find uh, sources in the soft band with a larger significance. So this all source we Thank you. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. So I think we're just at the hour. So thank you very much for a very interesting talk and for keeping up, up with the time and for, for your service. We really appreciate it. And thank you everybody for attending. We will meet again next week. Thank you. Thank you, Jen.